What's going on, folks? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Your Uncle Beto's Grow Labs. What we're going to do today is we're just going to mix up some of this um, Azimax foliar application. Um, it's real easy. See, it comes in a small bottle with its own measuring cup. The cool thing is when you squeeze the bottle, it fills up. And I'm using about 8 mils for this 28 ounce spray bottle, which on the chart here is the medium range for foliar feed. So, again, it's real easy. You can see the water starts out clear, but once you mix this stuff in, it turns the water white. So it's kind of hard doing this one-handed. And here we go. To the number eight line. Dump that in. We'll cover this up. Give it a nice little shake. Let's see. It's already starting to activate. And it turns the water white. As you can see, I label all my bottles so I don't mix anything up. I don't accidentally, you know, misplace one of these or use it on the wrong plants. But that's pretty much it. The next shot you'll see is me spraying these down and these babies will be dosed. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm also switching out my fly ribbon paper. I haven't noticed too much um, fungus snap um, activity but oh you know safe better safe than sorry. So what I've done is I went to the little hardware store and these were the only ones I can find and they work really well so basically it's just these little guys pull this little red ribbon here and it all comes out Just keep on pulling and it unravels itself and then you can just hang this right on up and as it hangs it kind of relaxes and flattens itself out. Alright folks now here we are in the clone area and uh, this is where I get my next clones or you know my next crop started so because I just flipped these at the flower and they'll usually take about uh, you know two to three months to finish you know anywhere between nine and twelve weeks so I have these in here to uh, that I took uh, I just finished spraying these, as you can see, at the fly paper in here as well. But these are going to veg for about, again, anywhere from six to eight weeks. And now we go that long because in a week or so, we're going to come in here and we're going to top all these. I'm going to put the strongest ones in little soil, square soil cups, so they can get acclimated with the mycorrhizal and get happy once the they get to the appropriate size they'll go into the vegetative room and we'll just keep this cycle going so again as soon as these are done vegging they're going to be ready to flip into flower um, so just a constant cycle we're just going to keep it going these ones here are only about a week old 
Um, so again, just keeping the cycle going, keeping my options going, uh, but just wanted to fill you guys in on how I keep this all going. As soon as you know the other room goes into flower, these cuttings are right about rooted. So again, it's just the time game. Every 12 weeks, we want to start something to flowering. And there it is. That's what it looks like when she's all hung up and ready to rock. The new fly strip in. I'm gonna put another one in on the other side of the room, but just wanted to give you guys a quick little pick at, you know, the normal day-to-day -day things that happen in the grow room. It's been about a week, and you can already see all the little hairs forming. Sorry about the, I don't have my filter, I'll grab it. See all the little white hairs starting to form. Boy, these ladies have started to stretch, folks. Let's hope we don't run out of room here. One thing that I'll just have you guys keep an eye on is the height. This tomato's cage, just remember, we're about a hand above it. So we're just going to keep an eye on this to see how much all of these stretch above these tomato cages that are in here. That's kind of what we're going to use to gauge. As you can see, I situated all the shortest plants under the big light so that they could stretch have more room to be uh, to stretch without worry about burn whereas this light you can get within you know four inches of it and it won't burn the plants the heat here is the same as the heat here So that's about 10 inches from the bottom of the bulb and I can feel the warmth. I gotta put my hand right up against this one to feel the same amount of warmth as this one 10 inches away. So now let's see if my let's see if the fly paper is gonna get caught up in the light when it moves over. Shouldn't. I think I measured pretty good. sends the light back all right folks so here we are I want to do my best to spray these down before the lights turn off it's always best to spray your plants right before your lights turn off so they don't get burnt now I might be spraying them a little too soon but you know time is of the essence so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in the back corner work my way across and then get these and just keep on this so I don't get myself all sprayed down with this stuff because it's kind of stinky. But there you go. It's always best to go under the canopy and spray. Because there's not very much room in here it's a little difficult but because I've been treating these plants all along every week 
I'm not too concerned at this point. This is just peace of mind stuff that we're spraying for. So for this whole room, I'll probably use this whole bottle to get a nice drench down. And I might be spraying this maybe one more time, and then after that, no more. Just let these babies go. So I'm going to go through and spray the rest of these, and we'll be right back. All right, folks, now everything is nice and sprayed down. As you can see, it's, it's dripping nice and wet. all little droplets that's what you want to see so that the leaves on top you know if you missed any down below they all drip down onto each other but like I said up until this point I would take all these plants out of the room spray them from the bottoms up from the tops down all the way around so from this point out it's really just preventative it's upkeep and peace of mind 